Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure with me, Wookie? And I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video today. A day late, but I'm here to talk about a day to bring down gods. The reason I say a day late is because I was supposed to do this yesterday, but then Dragalia shutdown notice came down and I've just been kind of... Uh, I just kind of had to deal with what I was going to do in the future. <laughs> Oh, well, no, that's not it, actually. I was just super bummed out, so I kind of just wanted to play Dragalia and do that. But I'm going to be doing it now. It, but this also just completely slipped my mind. I completely forgot that today was the live stream, so let's go into it. So Olympus is out now. Um, here's some other things about it. I mean, at this point, you can just play it. We already know the pre-release campaign. We're here to talk about the units. Um, both of them are not limited. Though Canaeus is basically uh, limited because she's the, they are story locked. The Dioscorus, which is just I think Pollux and Castor, they are just always in the banner. So there's really no reason to be summoning <laughs> unless you badly want Canaeus. The, 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 oh man, this is gonna be weird. I know that Canaeus calls themselves he, but I'm gonna be saying she. Forgive me if I am wrong. I'm not doing it in terms of hurting. It just that's the way I kind of see him. So forgive me if <laughs> if you're hurt by that. But I, it slips in, so my bad. Anyway, she is a uh, story lock, so she's gonna be very hard to get. If you want to have the best chance of getting them, you always have to make sure to summon on a banner where they are a featured unit on it. Thankfully, there are plenty of units where they are featured in it. Um, but this this being maybe not one of the better ones. I think they are actually featured on the next banner going forward next week. But either way, I know they have better banners in the future, so don't worry about it too much. But if you want them now, the best chance you're going to get is right now. Because once they're in the story, um, once they're in the story, the permanent gacha, it's going to be very hard to get them. And I say that as someone who has a five star in that gacha, it's just impossible to ever get one of these story lock characters once they leave. But anyway, let's go over them. Um, since uh, the banner's already up, if you summon for them, tell me. I know a lot of people are summoning for her, so... and But to be fair, I also really like Tedeschus. I kind of like their look and their theming. I really like the two units at the same time. I like it with the Yuri Pirates, and I kind of like it with them as well. Um, it's a shame they're a 5-star, though. It's going to be borderline impossible for me to get. I have to get really lucky randomly. But anyway, let's get into what they do. Just tell me if you summoned or not. Um, so they have two quick cards, two arts cards, one buster, and a uh, arts and P. The, uh, there's five hits on the quick card, four hits on the arts cards, two on the buster, and six on the extra. Five on the extra. And I believe it is eight on their noble phantasm, which is great, because that's really helpful for gaining NP. That makes them very good at it. More hits is always better. Um, including on extra and on buster, I actually don't know if, if any of that matters. So, um, tell me if you know, actually. I wonder what hit values actually matter. I should ask someone. I have a friend who should know. I'm going to ask him after this <laughs> and see what he says. But anyway, here's their skill one. Grants on self on attack. Activate buff for three turns. Charges on MP gauge when attacking with quick cards. And gains crit stars when attacking with arts cards. It is at level 10, 10 stars, and 10% MP, which is not bad because basically you're kind of swapping them off. Um, the quick the the stars you would get by doing a full quick chain you kind of get by using three busters which is nice and if you do attack with two quick you're your two that's 20 percent and because they are a single target unit that means that they're not really used for farming so it's kind of okay for this ability right here to be kind of used on their attack stuff it, it matters less when the unit is not really used for farming at least i think so uh, second skill, increases party MP damage for one turn, increases party attack for one turn, grants party debuff immunity for one turn, one time three turns, MP damage is 15% and attack is 15% at level 10. Pretty nice, pretty okay. Not the most MP damage you could get at one turn and not the most attack you can get at one turn to be 100% honest with you, but the fact that this also gives debuff immunity one time for three turns is pretty nice, uh, especially in challenge quest where there might be a debuff that's going to hurt the team a whole bunch. It's nice to have this. Third skill, Mana Burst, Light, and Slash Ancient, A. Increase own quick performance for three turns, increase own arch performance for three turns, grant self evasion for one turn, and it is 20% and 20% for quick and arts. 
Um, the one negative about this, which is a huge negative for every skill that has this ability, is that when it has evasion on it, it kind of means you have to plan differently. Because there might be times where you want to save your skill for later on so you can potentially not die to a noble phantasm, as opposed to just getting a quick power boost. And because this boost itself is not... It's actually so, like... Mm, the, 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 yeah, it's a bummer. It, like, you would have to hold off if you want to potentially... Uh, use the evasion right away. The one thing I will say though is that because they are a arts unit technically, uh, Tamamo and Castoria are two of the better units to kind of have this skill with. Uh, the reason being is that they have a lot of defensive capabilities. On Tamamo's side, not only is she defensive capable, she has a her noble phantasm makes it so that skill cooldowns go down faster. I think it's by one on Noble Phantasm, it might be one or two, but that makes it so you can get them feasibly much faster, and because she also has a way to kind of stall MP gain on them, um, you could in theory use this turn one and then get it by the time you might need it for giant Noble Phantasm. It's totally possible, and Castoria just is so defensively good on her MP that it's fine if you don't have evasion, she will have your back on that uh, in that front. So they get a little bit of a pass in my eyes on that one, but it's still not the greatest, and I will grant you it's not the greatest. Passive skill, magic resistance A, increase on debuff resistance by 20%, writing B, increases on quick performance by 8%, man enhancement B-, increase buster performance by 7.5%, avenger B, increases on NP generation rate by, when taking attacks by 18%, 500% chance to reduce party's debuff resistance by 8%, except self. Oblivion Correction C increases on crit damage by 6%, self replenishing magic D charges on NP gauge by 3% every turn, and Twin God's Essence increase on damage by 225, increase on NP generation by 5%, and increase on crit star generation by 5%. Pretty good, 7 passive skills. Not uh, because they are technically 2 servants and 1, so that's very nice. And their Noble Phantasm is the Hymn of the Divine Twins, it's 8 hits. Uh, it's arts and it ignores invincibility for one turn deals damage to that ignores defensive buffs to one enemy uh, Reduces their art resistance by three and their quick resistance by three and it is by 10% a charge of 100 um, And also it's 900% MP damage um, Now because it has a lot of hits on it and because they are arts focused it should be and they actually get a lot of MP gain too not only in their um they get a vast majority of it from their skills, but in general, if you're using them with the correct buster supports, it shouldn't be that hard to get them a lot of MP gain. So it's possible to, for you to loop with some of their stuff, which is going to be nice. So that means you can definitely spam this mobile phantasm so that you are using it at least two, and in theory, three times in the perfect setup, uh, which is very nice. It's very cool. And if you're doing something like using BB, then you can <laughs> effectively get 100% of your arts up at the same time. Though in order to do that, you would probably have to uh, plan it out a little bit better if you want to do it that way, but it is totally possible. So yeah, that is the twins. That is Dioscuri, or the, Di the Gemini twins, Castor and Pollux. Um, I like them. I actually think they're pretty neat. Uh, even though I don't use a lot of single target units for challenge quests. <laughs> they're not my go-to, for sure, because I usually prefer grinding units. But when there is a super hard challenge quest out there and you just need someone to kind of have your back, I think they're pretty good in a tight spot. Especially since they have some fun utility that they can definitely be usable. They're not bad in any sense of the word. They're just like good and they could probably deal they can hold their own is what i'm saying the only real negative i would say is that they don't have the ability they don't have uh ability that gives them a lot of crit damage the only thing they have is oblivion correction and it's only six percent like if they had a way to supply their own just because arts isn't really like crit focused it's more np gain kind of focused um quick is usually the one that is more quick and buster actually are both kind of more centered around that but not really arts. Not in my, not to my knowledge anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's them. Dioscuri. And next, finally, we have Canaeus. Canaeus, I'm not 100% sure. Funny because I know so much about Greek mythology, but I actually don't know how to pronounce this specific name. Uh, Canaeus, everyone's favorite. Absolutely zero controversies around them at all, given the fact that I had to give a tiny spiel. <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of people who will 
on both sides who will very angrily get angry if you um, call Kanaeus a woman and if you call Kanaeus a man and I'm like they're both it's in a really weird case it's like yes the spirit of the man is inside Kanaeus but this is their female body it's weird it's I wish they kind of had done it a little it's kind of similar to Mo where Mordred is 100% female body, but she is the son. But she also uses, like, she pronouns and stuff like that. So I can understand where some of it, especially since this is a touchy subject for a lot of people, but uh, just know that I know and I'm doing my best here. I just don't know in the answer to this one. In my eyes, he and she work perfectly, and I think Day is actually probably the best one you could use, but either here nor there. If you feel like saying something about it to me, <laughs> feel free to leave a comment. But do know that it is, I think, a kind of interesting case. I actually think there's a lot of interesting things about this unit. But anyway, two quick cards, one arts card, two busters, uh, three hits, three hits, three hits, five hits. So pretty nice. Uh, not a lot on arts, which is kind of a shame. So that's going to be a pain in the butt to get them um, more NP for sure. Anyway, their active skill. Uh, Monstrous Strength B+, plus. increase own attack for two turns, 40% at level 10. I think this is the best version of Monstrous Strength B+, because for a 30% strength, you get it for three turns. For 50%, you usually get it for one turn, so 40% for two turns is okay in my eyes. It's better than just giving yourself 30% attack, because I feel like at that point you may as well do more than just that. But that's how I think on that. Uh, second skill, this, this the one that's currently in NA is actively bad. Grants self on attack, activate buff for three attacks, three turns. Increase on attack for one turn when normal attacking activates first. Inflict attack down by 10% for one turn on enemies when normal attacking. And it is 20% per each. It, uh, the reason I call this not the greatest is one, they are an AoE unit. So... Yeah, not the greatest, but this ability does get better later on because it gets the ability to gain crit stars every, every turn for three turns and charges their own MP gauge by 20%, which is nice. Uh, not ideal because she is a buster support, but because they are buster support, um, at least in NA right now, you don't have a lot of options besides Merlin and Waver, so you kind of want your buster support to have a 50% NP Either they get it from a skill like Ishtar, or it's kind of like Artoria, where um, they get 30% from their skill, but then they get 20% back from their NP. In that case, it's a little bit different, just because you need to accommodate the fact that you are using potentially Merlin and Waver in this scenario. So you need to kind of plan a little bit better. But yeah. The skill gets better eventually, sometime down the road. And her third skill is reduce on damage taken for three attacks, three turns. And grant self get status one time, three turns, 3,000 at level 10, and 3,000 HP gained. Not bad in turn six cooldown. Sometimes guts can be weird, because sometimes gut skills are like, especially the old ones are like eight turns or something like that. But six turns is perfectly fine. Um, passive skills, as you can see, magic resistance C. Increases on debuff resistance by 15%, mad enhancements EX, increase on buster performance by 12%, Sea God's Essence B, increase on damage by 225, increase on arts performance by 8%. Uh, this, uh, this one basically kind of use useless because they only have one arts card. Not great. And the madness enhancement is very nice. I think EX is the best version of this where it gives you 12%. Um, Ender Noble Phantasm. Uh, increase on crit damage by 50% for 3 turns, deals damage to all enemies, uh, at level 1 it's 300%, and increase on NP damage for 3 turns, at charge 100%, it is 10% NP damage, uh, okay, and that's Kanaeus, and I think they're just kind of, okay, I think it's a little bit weird to be buster, to buster focused, especially in the current meta of NA, it's a little bit different over in JP where you have more options, but I feel over here you're kind of ham-tied by a lot of what you expect. Um, if Especially if you don't have like the perfect thing. I actually think they're probably better for challenge quests. So and in terms of challenge quests, I think she has enough to kind of fit there because of this ability here with Guts. Having the Guts and reducing on damage is pretty damn nice, I would say. Uh, and also, of course, 
this one right here. So it's a little bit weird because it's like not for grinding but for challenge quests or boss fights where there are multiple enemies that you have to fight. And they totally do exist, like in uh, China there's definitely one where there's just a buttload of enemies and having something like this would actually be kind of useful. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking on them. I really do like them for a lot of reasons. Uh, I kind of like their character, I kind of like their design. A lot of people actually don't like Kinesis' character. Funny enough, the reason is is that because I think on the JP side, a lot of the female fans get annoyed because Kinesis is yet yeah, to many people a woman, but because she says she he she is a man, um, she gets added to White Day <laughs> because they see that okay, she says she is a man, therefore she is a man, of course. But then to the female playing audience, they see it as a cop-out and say, like, this is just a way for you to release a female unit on Valentine's Day. A day for us, for White Day. Isn't Doesn't that mean it's potential for it kind of ruining things? And they kind of go, we have female fans, and then <laughs> they move on. They don't really think of it past that. So there's a lot of weird uh, baggage tied to them, but... I've never cared. I really do like them. I'm just going to be waiting for a better banner down the line. Just because these the the twins are not um, limited, that makes me kind of not want to summon on this banner all that much. But that's just me. If you summon for them, tell me how you did. Hopefully you got them. Um, sorry that it's a day late from when I want to do it. But I at least got to talk about them. And I got to talk about them. I'll make sure to do it for next week's bigger banner to have more time. <laughs> to talk about them for sure um because yes that's a there's a much bigger unit coming in a week that is a reason that you should not pull on this banner and they are tied to the story so i'm not gonna say who they are but most people should know who they are but if you've made it this far and haven't gotten spoiled then i'm not gonna say anything but anyway that's the end of the video everyone i hope you liked it if you did feel free to leave a like it helps out the channel a whole bunch especially with <laughs> Especially with the Jagalia nonsense going on. <laughs> the Fago likes me more now than they ever have. So I thank you very much for liking for watching the video, liking it, especially see it all the way through. Again, feel free to comment down below about anything I talked about. Either how you did, how you feel about them, stuff like that. Or if you're saving for next week, subscribe to me and I will see you guys next time. You guys have a good day. Peace out. <laughs>